I just got my, my stitches taken out about an hour ago. And the guy said if I get hit, that it'll, that it, you know, it'll probably open, but I'll just go back and get some more stitches and hopefully the guy won't be hitting me much on when I knock him out. I feel good to be back home and my mom's coming to the fight, my uncle's coming to the fight. We went out and everyone was like, oh man, wow. you're going to be at the fight, can I get tickets? Asked me all about Spencer, all about the UFC. I, I think a bunch of them think I'm in the UFC. I kind of stopped trying to explain that I'm not in the UFC, I'm just training with some of those guys. See y'all, see you guys. Hey, I'll give you a call tomorrow. Alright. Hey, 9 o'clock. 10 o'clock. I'm ready now he's just I used to work down at that pancake house with Earl's dad. Earl's dad? And his whole family. <laughs> Earl's dad. I, I stopped by to tell him that I was fighting there. Like, no, no, oh, no. No, you're not. You're not. No, you should. No. Then I have to take one Am I your luggage carrier today? Hell oh, yeah. You did a good job, buddy. Yeah, I did. It's crazy at times because I don't get to see him a lot, so. You like watching him on TV? Yeah. Tell all your friends that's my dad? Yeah, but they don't ever believe me. God, look at that face. <laughs> I mean, he was tough here, but he wasn't. He was just tough here. <laughs> he wasn't. He wasn't the fighter that he is now. He didn't seem to have that athletic physique and he didn't seem to have the initial propensity to, to be a fighter. As opposed to using correct technique, he would rather do it Spence's way, which was usually bulldogging his way in and hoping for the best and hoping he could land first. internal fire that's in Spence drove him to try to dominate everybody he grappled with, everyone he kickboxed with. Eventually though, I've seen that he's matured and I'm very, very proud of everything that he's accomplished. That's fine, man. I like that. Yeah, I love it, man. That's... You guys look too rough for me. <laughs> Oh man, I usually put it like, yeah, I got choked out by him in a basement of a house before anybody knew who he was or anything like that. It's, it is pretty cool to see him on TV and to see him, he's doing so well. He's a much better fighter, but you know, you could always tell that, you know, he had it in him to be a good fighter. I was screwed up. I was mad at the world. From early age, I, I blamed everybody for my shortcomings, and there's, I'm sure thousands of other people, millions of other people had the same lifestyle growing up that I did, you know, from a broken home, you know, my mother worked three or four jobs, I mean, it's the same stories that everybody else has, but uh, I was pissed because I didn't have the things that other people had. My parents passed away and my grandparents, after raising 10 kids of their own, took my sisters in and myself and, and raised us. My grandmother went to one of my fights and I got the shit kicked out of me. And that was our first and last fight to go. And my grandfather went to one and uh, he was on an oxygen tank to, to go and 
he got there and they had the people on the, the motorcycles circling around the ring. And he's like, God damn, gotta get the hell out of here. And the ring girls came out and it's like, I guess we can hang out for a little bit longer. And he, he got to see me fight this guy, but still it was an amateur fight. But my grandmother always said, you know, that I needed to work a little harder. My grandfather would probably think I need to be working manual labor in the garden with him because that was his thing, you know. If you want to be able to beat that guy, you better get out there and pick those rocks up or rake those leaves or something crazy. One time, I went to a karate tournament. When I was younger, my grandfather took me to a karate tournament. I think I got second place or something. And he's like, why didn't you whoop that boy? I'm like, well, whoop him. You know, I, I did the best I could, but it was, it was funny because you know, it was all or nothing with him. I still, as, as hard as I work, it's still not compared to the work that my grandfather did. You know, he just, it's nonstop for him. So that's just the way he lived his life. And I guess having 10 kids, you have to be that way. I'm just very fortunate to have the people in my immediate family that I do now. Otherwise, I don't know where I'd be. None of this would matter, and I wouldn't have a reason to accomplish these things. <laughs> My dad holds mitts for me and, well, fighting is his kind of thing and I just do it to make him happy because I'm kind of preppy. I'm a cheerleader, so. So you don't want to be a fighter? No, because it's kind of nerve-wracking because, like, just watching him get hit in the head a lot, it makes you nervous. <laughs> I feel pretty good, I feel a little bit nervous, but I think that's a good thing, I'll be ready to go. Just ready to get in there and fight right now. This is the worst time, just sitting around waiting for the fight. I've talked to a few people about the guy and I know that he's supposed to be really strong. That's kind of all I know about him. You know, everyone said he's pretty tough. He's not some bum, so.